we are on the June audit exam. We're up to page six, question 31. The diagram below represents two pulses approaching each other from opposite directions in the same medium. One of the interesting characteristics of waves is that when they're together, they can interact, but they can pass through each other in a medium. Light from one direction come by, and light from the other direction go by, and where they intersect, something can happen, but, but they continue onwards. So, um, which diagram best represents the medium after the pulses have passed through each other? Well, we want one where this pulse is on the other side. That pulse is over there. So, picture one shows them basically bouncing off of each other. Picture two looks kind of like what we were hoping for. Picture three has them inverted. And picture four has them reversed and inverted. So, question two is right. Question 32. The car's horn is producing a sound wave having a constant frequency of 350 hertz. If the car moves towards the stationary observer at a constant speed, the frequency of the car's horn detected by the observer. Now this is Doppler effect. Basically, an object makes waves of some frequency. But if the object happens to be moving, then basically it starts catching up with its own waves. So in front of the object, the number of waves per second would be higher, or a higher frequency, or a higher pitch. And behind the object, the number of waves per second would be less or lower frequency. So we're looking for an answer that indicates a number higher than 350. 320, 330, 350, and 380. So 380 is the correct answer. This is a Doppler effect. I think I got enough time to show you something. This is my favorite thing. It's called Race in a Can. And if you open it up, there's a couple race cars. And the race cars will uh, stick to the outside of the can. And then when you turn the can on... It's awesome. However, they make the distinctive meow, meow, meow sound. Is it coming towards you? Nee, higher frequency. And so it goes away from you. Meow, lower frequency. Meow, meow, meow. That's racing a can. Pretty cool, huh? Question 33. Mercury atom has a ground state, absorbs 20 electron volts of energy. It's ionized by losing an electron. How much kinetic energy does the electron have after the ionization? Well, this takes us to the uh, energy level diagrams, and uh, we go over to mercury. And in the ground state, 10.38 electron volts is required to ionize this electron. It's in the ground state. It would require that much energy to rip it off, 10.38. So uh, I've got a certain amount of energy, 20 electron volts, and I lose 10.38 electron volts. And so whatever energy I have left turns into the kinetic energy. So 20 minus uh, 10 and something is going to leave you 9 and change, and uh, so that's got to be the answer. Question 34. Which fundamental force is primarily responsible for the attraction between protons, which are positive, and electrons, which are negative. Well, the answer can't be gravitational. That's silly. Gravitational is the weakest of the forces, though it does extend over the greatest distance. A uh, strong force is uh, a nuclear force. A weak force is uh, kind of responsible for radioactivity. Electromagnetic, that's the positive negative force that holds the proton and the electron together. Electromagnetic. All right, question 35. The total conversion 
of one kilogram, a thousand grams, one kilogram, which is the mass, uh, and it's converting it entirely into energy. So E equals mc squared. So energy is equal to a kilogram times the speed of light, so that's 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second squared. So uh, 3 squared is 9 times 1 is 9 times 10 to the uh, uh, 2 times 8 is 16. And kilogram meters squared per second squared, so that's joules. So I've got 9 times 10 to the 16 joules. And um, that seems to be one of the choices. Let's go with it.